In this video, I'm going to show you, you can generate a PDF of elements on your bubble page and include a header that also has your company logo. You can see that I've generated a PDF. It's been downloaded into my browser. And when I open it up, you'll see we have Cranford Tech on the top left here, our company logo. It's also on the second page. And you'll also see that we have a footer included with a link to our website and a page number. The first thing we're going to want to do is go to the plugins tab of our bubble editor and install the PDF creator plugin. This is a paid plugin that I've developed myself, and you can find it by searching for PDF Creator. Once you have the PDF Creator plugin installed, you'll have access to a new visual element, and that element is the PDF Creator element, and you're going to want to drop that anywhere on your page. Now that we've dropped this on our page, and I'm just going to put it down here at the bottom, we're going to have access to a couple of new workflows. So I'm just going to click on this Generate PDF button, And if we add a workflow here, what we'll see is that under the element actions, we now have access to this generate a PDF creator action. So you're going to select that. And the way we're going to define which elements to PDF is we're going to need to supply the plugin here with some ID attributes. These are essentially a way to identify which elements we're going to PDF. And as you can see here under the documentation, we need to change something in our settings to ensure we can do that. So if you go to settings, go to general, I go down here to the very end, you'll see here there's an option, expose the option to add an ID attribute to HTML elements. You're going to want to ensure that this is indeed ticked like I have it here. Once this is ticked, what you'll find is that once you click on an element, so for example, let's click on this text element up here, there's an option down here at the end called ID attribute, and you can assign this any value you want. So what I'm going to give this is the ID attribute my title, and then I'm going to X out of it. I'm also going to give this text description here an ID attribute called my description. And finally, you'll see I have a repeating group here, which contains all the information of our users. Uh, I'm just going to select the actual repeating group itself. And I'm going to go down here and I'm going to call this my info employees. Uh, we'll copy that and then if we go back to our workflow where we're generating the pdf we can add in those id attributes so i'll put in my title i'm going to put in my description comma space and then finally i'll paste in my info employees i'm going to give this file name as employee info and then I'm going to put in a dynamic date. So I'll look for the current date time. And I'm going to format that as this particular way here. Okay, so you'll also see that we have the options either auto download and save the database. I am going to download this particular one, but I'm not going to save it to my database. I'm going to set the scale as three. You can see the documentation here gives a description of what scale represents, but essentially it's a trade off between the size and the quality of the PDF. You set this up to 10, you're going to get a very high quality PDF, but it is going to be a much larger file size. I think two or three is usually a good starting point, and you can adjust from there. I'm going to put some margins on my PDF just so the information isn't hugging the sides and the tops. I'm going to put 40 on the top and bottom, and then 20 on the sides. And I'm going to set page break to yes. We're going to come on to the footer and header content in a minute, but for now, let's just take a look at what our PDF looks like. So you can see here, our repeating group is loaded up. And if we click on generate PDF, we should see that be generated. You can see it has the file name there, employee info, and then the current date. And if I click on that, you'll see here, we're getting the title, the description, and then our repeating group down here. So that's a good start, but let's say we want to add in our header and our footer. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by adding in a simple header. So I'm going to go down here to our header section. And I'm going to say the left header content is going to say Cranford Tech. And the right header content is going to say our website name, which is www.cranfordtech.com. You can see here you can specify the font size. You can also specify how much of a margin is going to be on the header on both the top and on the left and on the right. But let's see how this looks first of all. So we'll refresh our bubble app. 
go down here again to generate PDF. I will open it up. And you can see here, you've Grant for Tech on the top. You have our website on the right hand side. It matches up with the margins we've used for the rest of the PDF. And we can see it's on the second page as well. It is a bit close to the other information. So what I might do is just give an extra top margin to the PDF. And the way I can do that is just by going back in here and setting our top margin instead of the 40, let's set it to 80 and see how that looks. Generate our PDF again. And I think that looks a lot better. You can see here that's working out pretty nicely. Okay. Now let's say we want to go with a logo in our header. What we can do is we can go back to our workflow and you'll see here there's an option to upload an image. And if we read the description below it, you can see here, once we upload an image, we can specify that we want to include that by just typing my image into either one of the header or the footer content fields. Now at the moment, this only supports PNGs or JPEGs, may support SVG files in the future, but maybe just be aware of that. So I'm going to upload an image and I'm going to choose the Cranper Tech logo file here. You'll see here it is a 240 by 80 pixel image and you must keep the dimensions similar to what you've uploaded. That doesn't mean you have to do 240 by 180, but it just means you have to give a width and a height here that is the same kind of scale as what you've uploaded. So I could do 240 by 80, but what I actually prefer to do is because that's a bit big, I'd actually just want to have both of these numbers and go with 120 and 40. And then we upload our image. What I can do is I can go to our left header content and I can just type in my image. And I'm going to leave the right header content like that for the moment. Refresh. And let's generate that PDF. And we'll open it up. And you can see here now we have our logo in the top left, our website on the top right, and the same on the next page. I think I actually want to get rid of this and put this on the bottom in the footer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back here. I'm going to get rid of that from the right header content, but I am going to put it in the left footer content. So I'll say www.cranfordtech.com. And what I'm also going to do is I'm going to put in the expression page counter in the right footer. What this is, is it's going to give a number on each page of our PDF. So because this is the first page, it's going to say one down here, it's going to say two down here, and if you had a longer PDF, it will continue in that vein. So let's try and generate our PDF again. Click on generate PDF, and you can see here we no longer have anything on the top right, but we do have our company logo here. And then on the bottom, we have a page counter, one, two, and we have our website link down here, which is actually clickable. If you click on that, you'll see it opens up the Cranford Tech website. The last thing I'm going to do is just going to add a line to the footer. So if I click on that, it's now going to show a line on the footer. So let's create one last PDF. Open that up. And uh, we still have our logo on the top. But now we have this line on the bottom just to distinguish that this is indeed the footer. So if this has been useful, if you have any questions, you can let me know in the comment section.